the six instructors in the course, I was one of the instructors. Um, I actually have, an, I have a faculty appointment, so I also teach at Stanford. Um, I taught it at our School of Education, and I also was an adjunct instructor at University of British Columbia this semester. Um, I was central in creating the, the content, pulling it together, curating it, coding within the platform, setting up the assessments. And my doctoral work is in qualitative research. She was also then setting up the research projects. I did the IRB. I negotiated the legal. Um, so I was very much there on the ground doing a lot and working very closely with Kevin Stranick. I think that librarians are critical partners in this yeah. initiative. Um, definitely their knowledge of content and in finding materials is very valuable. I think their knowledge of copyright is also valuable. Um, I think their role in marketing. Um, as libraries, I say we are one of the hubs of the campus. So we did market through our library website. Um, we used all of our different mechanisms to get the word out through the library. Um, so I, I think that's another huge role for the libraries around marketing. Um, so I think those were three, definitely. And, and I think librarians can contribute as instructors. Um, you know, we did bring in information literacy components to the course, and that was a key area. One of the things that is common is that as librarians, we very much celebrate the collection that we've spent a lot of time and money curating, um, which is great. And we tend to go to those materials. However, in this case, I could not use any of my licensed materials within the course. Even for course readings, we decided we only wanted open access readings. So even if I had perhaps the perfect reading that was not open, we really erred on the side of openness. So it, that was a bit of a change. Um, we tend to lean towards our subscription resources, which actually I think is a mistake. We should really be celebrating both the resources we have that are open and the resources that we subscribe to as a broader collection. The nuts and bolts are the logistics of what made our course work. And I focused on two areas, which were the legal issues related to our course and the, the more platform and content issues. Um, related to the legal issues, we had great support from the Stanford University's Office of General Counsel. Um, they helped us to create a collaboration agreement which really laid out how all of the schools would work together, including how we would be responsible for creating content, how we would share the data once it was collected, how we would license the course, and then the risks that the different universities would assume around the, the content and the data in the platform. Um, I also talked about the platform and some of the kind of hiccups we had with the platform in terms of the content that we used. One of them was that we needed to get permission um, to make derivative works of those of the videos that we used because we were running a bilingual course and needed the translations to be made. Um, so that was a hiccup. Also, we had some issues with the assessment components in the platform. And because we were a bilingual MOOC, the MOOC platform, OpenNX, wasn't really set up to handle two languages at the same time in the same instance. So we had some issues there, but we were over to we were able to overcome them with some um, with some creativity. Sure. So all of the videos that we used were taken from the web. They were content that already existed on the web, and despite our best efforts to find ones that were CCBY attribution or just copyright um, copyright clear CC0 materials, um, in some cases we were unable to do that. And we did pull a lot of our materials from YouTube. And unfortunately, in some cases, when there were, those videos were uploaded to YouTube, they used a YouTube license, which is actually more restrictive than a CC BY license, which meant in order to make a derivative of that work, the translation, we needed to get permission. And there were approximately 32 videos that we needed to go out and get permission for. And so that meant a workflow in which we had to contact the copyright holders to get permission to make those translations. So we, were, um, we had embedded the videos, the YouTube videos, into the platform. There were links out directly to YouTube if someone would want to watch them there. In the case that we did not get permission, within the platform we simply put a link out to YouTube. We did not bring it in if we did not, did not have permission.